Welcome back. This is part two of every single receipt from the Cat Williams interview. Let's get it. 980,000 views on a little silly video that I thought was just funny. Incredible. Yeah, some of y'all been calling me messy. Because look at you back for another one. Anyway, this is part two <laughs> opinions. Anything that he's saying in this video does not reflect mine. Nor do, nor am I saying I agree with any of this. This is just me presenting what he said. This, these videos were not easy to make. Uh, the so receipts sure do. So appreciate the receipts work, agree. And, like, and also subscribe because you will get more stuff like this. Roll the clip. All right, you know what they're gonna do, you Jim? Why am I going to jail? Let me show you. What's going to happen to your little ass? I did then. How can a man who claims to be heterosexual? Have another man do him like that. I'm not surprised to put on the dress. I mean, watching that clip now, I think it's done more than put on the dress. I think. <sighs> calm down, calm down. Let's keep going. I've done with every single role, whether it was an Emmy winning role or whether it wasn't, whether I was playing somebody homeless, whether I was playing a dirty vagabond on Atlanta. Whether it was an eccentric guy in First Sunday, you're trying to create a character. You don't, you can't just be phase on in every movie. Like, you're just gonna take your shirt off of every movie? Like, why does it say that in your script? Man, let's. I was like, cop on coat pulled behind me, had lights and everything. Cop on coat pulled behind me, lights and everything. Is that Chris Sucker? He looks different. And I love this guy, man. Why did he have to go to Epstein's Island? Why? Let, let Big Worm breathe. But you gotta admit the role that he played Big Worm, I mean Big Perm in Friday Night. You gotta give him credit for the role now. Come on now. If what you're saying is correct, why wasn't he in next Friday or Friday after next? I mean his role, I mean It wasn't he, good. Two more. What you got? Boy, what the fuck you want? Give me some chili freedom. About five months prior to me getting this first audition for Friday After Next, I got this baby son. I'm holding him up above me. He grabs my little chain. He's playing with it, and he accidentally drops it. It breaks out my front two teeth. I'm in a situation now where when I go to the dentist, they're telling me this going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars to fix this right. They're not telling me what it's going to look like. I go get an estimate with no money involved, find out what I need to do. They find out you got a tumor in your upper jaw, so we're going to have to do a whole surgery for you. Oh, wow. It's going to be 100 bands. Dude said the entire time we were filming, I can't play this role. They got a bandana over my nose and my mouth. My family not even going to know who this is. Eating a big-ass sandwich and shit. Nigga, I'm Santa Claus. What the fuck the milk and cookies? And now you know what nobody has ever said in the whole industry in 20 years about, you know, the whole money Mike not getting raped in the bathroom. Right. That's the story. It's on me, Ice Cube. Um, just wanted to address a few things. You know, everybody been checking out the internet. Um, my man, Cat Williams. Um, you know, first of all, I just want to say you know we shot that movie over 20 years ago so it's been a long time you know, people have different perspectives and it's been a long time so in the movie there's second thing i want to clear up it was never i would never shoot a rape scene uh in a movie especially like friday Decisions. You know, look, I've had Cube, I've talked to Cube, and a lot of people say Cube don't doesn't pay. What's That's your relationship with Cube and what soul. did that opportunity mean for you? Well, the ungrateful bastards that would say anything about Cube's payment. So I think Ice Cube uh, kind of got a little mad at you because I guess you came out and said that you only made $2,500 for doing Friday? No, no, no. That was the truth. I said that two years ago. They asked me to do the, the other one, and I was like, uh, they 
gave me um double I think it was five thousand dollars. I was like, I got here. It was just a small movie. We filmed it in twenty days and I didn't get you know, about ten thousand dollars for it or whatever. I didn't care. I just was I wanted the opportunity. And look, you know, a lot of people are talking about pay and how much that was paid on these movies that were extremely low budget. You know, most of these guys work a couple of days, you know. And when you're doing a movie, there's over 100 people working on the movie that need to get paid. Most of them got to get paid every day. Um, and there's pre-production and post-production, even after you finish with yeah, the act. it's not you easy, man. Pay editors and sound people in. And my movies are all about quality, so most of the money... Goes There's something about Ice Cube that just, um, that I really like, and that just seems very genuine. Now, it's in the industry, okay, and it was part of one of the most famous rap groups of all time, so I'm not gonna, you know, give him, I'm, I'm not gonna give him the benefit of doubt that he's done some, you know, not so pleasant things in the past, but I will say for sure that like, he's definitely one of the best of a bad bunch, you know, um, now... I don't know, he's, he seems like a genuine guy, he seems like a genuine guy, but at the same time, you know, I'm sure he's done some things in the past, I mean, he was friends with Snoop Dogg, he was friends with a lot of these people, he was young and dumb at one point, I'm sure he's done a few things, you know, here and there, but then it looks like a kind of individual that's trying to elevate himself, and trying to like better himself, trying to become the best version of himself, so kudos to him for that. What on the screen? Well, I made enough to get them teeth fixed just like you did. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, <laughs> More receipts. Uh, we miss John Witherspoon in a way that can't really be quantified, right. if I'm being honest with you. And um, the Chris Tucker that we got now is Epstein Island Chris Tucker, <sighs> not Smokey. And I, I met him on that trip because it was his plane. I didn't know who plane we was getting on, but it was a whole bunch of dignitary people who was with us. Delegation receipts. And yeah, I, I've Damn. been. You know, you don't know people what they do in their private lives. So you didn't never go to that island, did you? No, 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 no. Uh, uh. I don't know where that thing got. Chris Tucker was very close friends with Michael Jackson, and you know what I've said about Michael Jackson on this channel. You know, let's not let I get our emotions mixed up, okay? If someone is wrong, they're wrong, okay? Michael Jackson talking about is it's perfectly normal for you to sleep on the same bed as an, with another child who's not your own child, by the way. No, it's not. No, it's not, Michael. And Chris Tucker was very close friends with him, you know. Um, they were both on the Loita Express or whatever it's called, the plane, Jeffrey Epson's plane. They were on there together. Even if they didn't go to the island, I'm sure there was some nasty stuff going up, going on on the plane itself. Okay, because that guy was a was an addiction was a, was addicted to the, that disgusting degenerative life, lifestyle. Epstein, I'm talking about here. You know, and all his friends, they all got involved at some point. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even, I don't hey, we was going to Africa to save lives. Chris Tucker didn't want to be the poster child for smoking weed. Going to Africa to save lives. This is so weird. Now that everything is coming out, it's it's all it's putting everything into perspective, isn't it? Going to Africa to save lives? Since when? You mean going to exploit the little kids there? And use them for your can't even say. That's how bad it is. Mother Theresa, she's not she's not as innocent as you guys think she is. Oprah Winfrey, she ain't as innocent as you guys think she is. You get a car, and you get a car, and you get a car. Uh, shut up. We know what you're about. You know, the apocalypse has happened. And what does apocalypse mean? The unveiling of the truth. That's what it means. And there's more to come. Let's keep going. He don't smoke weed like that. Right. He in the church. Six. Or 97. He's, he's Chris, we want to do a 
another Fridays, man. And I was just like, nah, I don't want to do another Fridays. I want to, you know, I want to do like Eddie Murphy never did. I want to do money talks. I did money talks, and then, then eventually at Russia, I said, I don't want to do another. And he said, what? You sure? I was like, nah, I don't want to do another. He goes, why I didn't do the second one? Because of the weed. Because I said, man, that movie became a phenomenon. I want everybody. I don't want everybody smoking weed. And I never really told people this because I kind of forgot about it. But it was yeah. one of the reasons why I didn't do it because I said I don't want to represent, you know, everybody smoking weed. I kind of made it more personal than a movie. He, Michael Jackson's best friend, Christmas. Michael Jackson called him Christmas. You ever met a man who gave you a little nickname like that? <laughs> Stop it. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> but this you, you hang out with Michael Jackson. He called me sometimes, check up on me, see how I'm doing. He's like, how you doing, Chris? <laughs> and when he really missed me, he called me Christmas. Hey, Christmas, how are you? He calls you Chris Christmas? He called me Chris. It feels good. At first, I was, I was like, why are you calling me? But then it starts sounding good. I was like, say that again, Mike. He's like, <laughs> yeah, because they tell you that there's no gatekeepers. But oh. we keep seeing the same people open the gate. Mm. Didn't Kevin open the gate and let Tiffany in? And he now opening it up for... Don't such and such open the gate, but... What do you mean ain't no gatekeepers? In the building, yeah, sir! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiffany Haddish and Kevin Hart! In the Yay. building! Hey, why you... uh, this is our seventh movie together. Four number ones, two number twos. Hopefully we're talking about one more number one. And coming off of a number one success, I said, dude, it makes no sense to not have Tiffany Haddish be a part of my first movie. Hey! Expe he basically admits to casting her because of her story and not her comedic talent. Typical. Especially understanding her story and where she's coming from, mm -hmm. so we casted Tiffany in the movie. Because, remember, Ricky Smiley sat right here and told you a story about how he performed with uh, Mike Epps and Cat Williams when he did Comic View, and to let him tell it, mm, he was funnier than both. Somebody stole your computer, I heard it. Stole my computer? Yeah. I, I, where? Your laptop? Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. Oh, uh-uh, it's going to be on up in here if I don't have my computer when I come back. I don't play that. No, but I'm saying... Just like people that tell you the Egyptians, they're not black. Egypt is in Africa, folks. Okay, now this is where things get a little bit more um, controversial. Um, in Egypt, there were different ethnicities, okay? Mostly black. Yeah, mostly black. I'm not gonna lie. But there were different ethnicities, okay? I talk about Egypt a lot on this channel because it's something that means a lot to me. And uh, because it was the last inter interstellar, uh, uh, interstellar country or community i guess uh before the takeover of julius caesar so yeah let's keep going as long as egypt is in africa then egyptians are african true and i gotta I read guess. this script for all these good white people but then again you know all this africa asia da, 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 does it really matter i mean we're all one at the end of the day you know that's why we can all travel to a different country and we can all like interact with one another can all breed with one another so all that doesn't really matter it's just another plot by the cabal you know to separate us you know that non-division so we're not targeting the people we're meant to be targeting we're fighting amongst ourselves where this nigga won't be to get an address with him oh, and i'm honest. literally <laughs> saying to everybody why is he in a dress again you already played the old lady as an FBI agent. We can play anything now. We can be playing a dog catcher this time. Why do we need to be in a dress? And I get so mad, I say, you don't want me. You want Brandon T. Jackson. And it was Cat Williams was trying to always say, Brandon, Brandon don't wear a dress. <laughs> he, he, he called you. He was trying to help you. He was saying in the media. So he was trying to help you. Me. He was really trying to help me. And like yeah. I said, like I said, with 12 comedy specials, why do I need to be in these conversations yeah. with these specialist people? Can we all give um, Cat Williams a round of applause, please? This guy, this guy lied. He ain't even lied about lying. He's not lied. We've got to respect people like this. We need more people like this in the industry. More authentic people. We need more people like this guy. Let's keep going. I already <laughs> told you, I'm one of the richest people that ever lived. Yes. Only in the fact that when I wake up in the morning, no matter where I am, I don't need nothing. Mm. Whatever I need is right around me. Mm. And whatever I don't have, 
It's only it. just because I don't have it. It's not because I can't get it. Because I, I know how blessed I am. If I look at it, I got it. Yeah. Mm. That's how Diddy be feeling. Yeah. I'm a savage! Oh. This guy is this guy is a comedic genius. That's how Diddy be feeling. Look at this guy. Oh, whatever I want, I have to get! Everybody, it's Tony Robbins. How you doing out there? Middle of the summer. Oh. Weird. I can do anything. Let me ask you a question. When you go, when you go to these cities to tour, do you make it a habit of getting out? That's how I built my reputation. That's also how I ended up in jail 19 times. Uh, because, well, yes, ma'am. I've never been to prison. Uh, you have 19 felonies, times. no convictions. Yeah. Knock yeah. it off. Prison okay. and jail aren't the same. They actually made this guy been to prison. Uh, like you 19 felonies. They actually made this guy look like a crackhead. Especially this picture. These two pictures right here. They made this guy look like a crackhead. He's just trying to be funny in this one, probably. You know, and this one is just pissed off. And you know his hair. Let's be honest, you know, his hair requires a lot of like upkeep, <laughs> you know, a lot of upkeep. So they did the same thing to DMX as well. They tried to make DMX look like he was losing his mind, you know, and he ended up losing his mind, you know. And unfortunately, this guy did recover. Oh wow! I need to drop a video on DMX, by the way, because his death was quite controversial. And him being my second favorite artist of all time, and him being someone who battled a lot of demons. You know, I was one of the good ones, in my in my opinion, in the industry, um, exposing them. Even though, like I said, he's done some nasty stuff too. But it was like one of the good ones of the bad bunch. Um, yeah, I feel like I owe him that. You know. No convictions. Yeah, knock it yeah. off. Prison and jail aren't the same. No, no, okay. no, 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 I make it my job that this character here, this character here, has to be as big as this whole project. So if you don't even see the movie yeah. School Dance, I want you to remember, whose goddamn white baby is this? <laughs> whose goddamn white baby is that? This is your baby, okay? You just I love this film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that one might be mine. That one right there, I'm not totally sure. Just because you name him Darren don't mean he belonged to Darren. So I've known Nick Cannon since he was 14. Nick Cannon has never called and asked me to do one single thing, and I turned him down. Because I've known him since he was a young black child in Hollywood. Wow. So um, what I did in Wild and Out was to be his protector. And you look like a badass belly button. And you and your crew, y'all can't hurt me. We all got on the same clothes. Y'all still look dirty. Because respect has to be in there as well. Or if you do trying to do it with Kevin Hart, you and him gonna get run over. You, you, you a teenager. He fine too. Like, come on. <laughs> what's gonna happen? You a grown man built like you the age of 12. The only reason you here is because Nick couldn't get Dave Chappelle. See, Jonathan Major, what he went through, oh. Marvel dropped him as soon as the guilty, uh, uh, the conviction came out. The, you... the Jonathan Major's situation is quite depressing, you know. I don't even know what to think about it, to be honest, you know. Um, all I'm going to say is this. Um, our women are being used against us, big time. Our women are being used against us. And it's so crazy because these are the same women that were meant to protect. You know, it's sad. You know, once upon a time, women were oppressed at one point. You know, not as oppressed as, as the media made it seem that they were. Like all men were these demons and had women on a leash. No, some men did it. Some men, the 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 minority kind of like ruined the reputation of the majority. But at the same time, it's like it did happen. Women were oppressed at some point. You know, um, but now. The men are being oppressed. Uh, who's going to stand up for us? It's so funny because the same people who's orchestrating this thing are the men. Because most of the men are the ones... Men are the ones in power. They're the ones orchestrating all this. They're the ones that are trying to like break everything down. Obviously, there's some women in the midst. So I'm not going to label it just men. But, you know, men run the world. And men are the reasons... You know, m most of the cabal is filled with men. But then again, race doesn't mean anything. It's your soul. Your soul is all that matters. Male, male, female, 
animal, this, plants, that, 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 all that matters is your soul. And yeah, plants, plants too, yeah. They're living creatures, that's why they die. Hey, you saw that black woman come get his <clears throat> charge cut in half? Thank you, Megan, Megan good. good. God bless you coming to save that slave. <laughs> Part of giving you the world. First of all, they went around the world for two years straight telling any women that would listen that this was a good-looking Negro. <laughs> Since when? When did y'all start liking a big nose and <laughs> a little head and a big jaw? I've got a big nose. I think I'm all right. <laughs> I promise you, guys, I'm not that vain. I'm not that vain. But yeah, um, beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder, you know. Um, everybody's got their spec. Uh, you know, but definitely, I got bullied for my nose growing up. <laughs> That's for sure, you know, because I grew up in the UK. And I got bullied for my nose. So, now, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, since the Kardashians start dating black guys, now, all of a sudden, black guys are meant to be this handsome, beautiful, sexy specimen of human beings, right? But back then, we were getting clowned on, you know, we are getting clowned, clowned on like crazy. And that just shows you that if they can make you believe Kodak Black is a handsome guy, they can make you believe anything, okay? So just be you, be yourself, you know, impress yourself before you impress anybody out there. Impress yourself first, love yourself, take care of yourself, treat yourself like a, like a temple that you are, you know, treat your body like a temple that you are, you know, and with time, self-improve, aim for something and go for it. Straight up. Oh, what? Is he not sitting there describing Shannon Sharp? Oh, shit. Sh face? Man, says when? I didn't... I didn't actually clock that. Oh, look at Shannon Sharp's face. Yeah, I don't know if oh, you've been shit. around Kanye, but from a distance, <laughs> from a language, guys. I suspect that we're pretty awful people if we say that somebody got a mental illness and then we watch what they do. By the time I got to TMZ, I was ramped up. So what was awesome is that the world got to really experience someone in a ramped up state. And that's when you get these comments that just shoot out, like almost like Tourette's. In good cases of bipolar where people go low, I'm, I'm one that uh, goes high. I... What are we reacting to? Mm. You're the one that put him in a position where he thought- It's not just mental illness, it's MK Ultra, okay? Kanye okay, West is on the MK Ultra, and if you know what MK Ultra is, it's been existing for a very long time. The Nazis did it, they see it. <clears throat> Let me slow down, I ain't trying to have people turn up on my door, <laughs> on my doorstep. But yeah, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, MK Ultra is a real thing. You know, it's been happening for a long time. It's the control a lot of celebrities. You know, they've, they're all, all celebrities have their handlers and everything. You know, I'm sure this is not the first time you've heard it. You know, it's probably gonna, it's probably not gonna be the last time you hear it either. It's all coming to light. Like I said, the apocalypse. The unveiling of the truth thought he was God. Everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was. A God. To call it. Now, let me say something about that. We're all gods. Oh, by the way, not every single one of us. Those who have a soul are gods. They control your reality. Anybody can tell you different. That makes you a God. You're a light being. You go to sleep at night and you dream. You're in another dimension. You're multi-dimensional being having a human experience. That makes you a god. We're all part of the oneness, the whole source. We are broken into different fragments of it. And each one of those fragments is just as important as the whole thing. Ah, oh, man, I need to do a separate video on this, guys. So just bear with me. Myself, Jesus. And you know what I told a guy that writes musical lyrics that he was a genius. Right, right. I 
Kanye the hallway. He's a genius. He's incredible. And I'm with him. This dude started a church and kept cussing. Nobody in black church said nothing. <laughs> you would have thought all the pastors would have came. You can't be no gospel artist. You just said fuck that bitch. <laughs> Nobody said nothing. Because T.D. Jakes over there with being in it. Like, oh, no come on. <sighs> look at them. Just look at them. This, this, this is the pastor that a lot of people look up to. When are we gonna wake up? <laughs> Nobody said nothing. I, I, I know I seem, I, I know I seem kind of triggered right now, but it's because this is getting ridiculous. Like, when are we gonna stop giving these people our power? These are false prophets. This is TD and TD TD Jakes. Since I was a child, I've been hearing about TD Jakes all my life. People have been looking up. They've been looking up to this guy. Pastors in Africa have been looking up to this guy. Pastors in Africa that I respected looked up to this man. Like I said, the unveiling of the truth, the apocalypse era. Over there with being in it, like, oh, you know, come on, <laughs> Are you related to uh, Luke? No, um, so there was a crossroads where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing. One of us had to cut off all their hair and couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points going to get $200 million because they were going to pay him $10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons mm. turned out to be ludicrous, and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. We're making billions of fucking dollars every time. Bro, and I'm saying that like, I'm just giving you my heart. I'm not... But at, at what cost though? You're making billions of dollars, but at what cost though? Every single one of you, at what cost? You know, we have Paul Walker who passed away, you know, a lot of people say his death was suspicious and it was a sacrifice apparently. You know, I don't really know much about it, so I'm not gonna speak on it. Um but at what cost? At what cost? The cost of your soul? What's with that quote again? What's the point in like uh gaining everything, you know, at the cost of your soul? I've forgotten the exact quote. What's the point? Is it worth it? I'm not trying to brag or nothing. What did they give? Two hundred, sir. Fast and Furious on is on what number right Ten. now? Ten. Ooh. Two hundred million. I'm about to give me one of the more women. Stop, Stop it. it. <laughs> Stop, Stop it. Stop it. Kevin told you he wasn't gonna wear no dress until they offered him the dress, and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision. Duh. Oh, you sure did. Before they brought it up, did you? You sure did. I was actually one of those comedians. But deal with the consequences, though. You sure do, but do you know? You gotta deal with the consequences. <laughs> Said no, nah, I wouldn't wear a dress. There's no way I would wear a dress. And and then when proposed with the opportunity of what I thought was funny, I said, "Oh, it's funny. I'm gonna do it." It's all about choice. You know, nobody makes you do anything. And on Saturday Night Live, you know, it was a choice that I made. I, I never, I do get up. What are you doing, man? Get your hands up. All right. You know what they're going to do you in jail? Why am I going to jail? Let me show you. What's going to happen to your little ass? I didn't even watch this. Thank you for watching. This took a lot of work. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Though, especially reading these comments, they had me so dead. Keep I'm, I'm going to tag her on the full video in the... In the Bio, because this was just beautiful. I, I mean, this was taking a lot of work, so respect to her, you know. I'm gonna link it in the bio, you know, in the description. So, yeah. yeah I'm coming. I like the reactions, everything. Like, this was fun. This was a fun little key. Yeah, it was fun. So. But, yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna be dropping about another video. I'm gonna be dropping two other videos, or maybe three Cat Williams videos. One is gonna be the uh, one where he was going to know the comedian where he roasted her the second one is going to be another video i wanted to drop for a very long time about cat williams exposing the industry you know he's been doing it for a very long time and the third one is going to be <laughs> the third one is going to be the ludicrous this <laughs> that's probably my favorite one um yeah i'm going to be dropping all three yeah with that being said peace and one love